Joel chapter 1. Joel is a book of judgment. It is written to the priests. It is a prophet of Judah. At the time what they would say is Joash. Joel is meaning Jehovah is God. Uh, the theme is the day of the Lord, the second advent, judgment. It's a book upon judgment of what sins Israel and Judah. The word of the Lord came, the word of the Lord that came to Joel the son of Pethuah. Hear this, ye old men. That's the ancients, that's the elderly people. They should know better. And give ear. All ye have into the land. It's everybody in the land. It's the Jews. Has this been in your days? Or even the days of your fathers? The answer to the question is no. It's not. It's what Joe is about to write. Has not happened. It's all prophecy. Tell ye your children of it. And let your children tell their children. And their children another generation. Now this is to speak to the Jews today in 2016. Joe is to be taught to the lasting generations of the Jewish people of the future prophecy of judgment. Because they're not doing right by God. And anybody like we've read today, Deuteronomy 27, 28, 29. The curses, the results of Judah going to paganism and worshiping another god. It's not a historical book. It's a future book. Something that will come. That which the palmer worm, and that's a hairy worm, has left, has the locusts eaten. And that which the locusts have eaten, have left, have the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm have left, have, have left, have the caterpillar eaten. And the curse is found in Deuteronomy 28, verses 39 to 41. God already told them in the law through Moses, you're going to go against me, and this is going to be the result. And here's the result. Even before they're going, well, they're going against God. As a future book, God is just requoting the law. What I told you in Deuteronomy 28 through my hand, Moses, is going to happen. Now, when the palmer worm gets his filling, then the locusts are going to come. And locusts very rarely leave anything. Locusts do a good job of cleaning. And then after the locusts, they canker worm, and they're trees and plants. It's not going to be much for them. And then after the canker worm comes the caterpillar. It's utter desolation utter destruction of vegetation and god controls the animals he had an ass speak he got on a donkey and rode that has never been ridden awake ye drunkards and weep and howl again that's usually what happens when you are drunk It's not something that happens after. All ye drinkers of wine. Because of the new wine. That's what comes off the grape. For it is cut off from your mouth. Hosea 4.11 Israel is like in Psalms 80 verse 8. Jeremiah 2 verse uh, 21. When the palmer worm, the locust, the canker worm, and the caterpillar come, you're not going to have no grapes. And from the grapes, you're not going to have new wine. And from the new wine, you're not going to have fermented wine. So you can forget about getting drunk. It's all going to be gone. Raisins will be gone. I believe people eat olive leaves. They'll be gone. Isaiah 28, verses 1 through 4. Deuteronomy 28, 30 to 34 again. This is widely spoken of in the law. For a nation, Revelation 13, 2, is come up upon my land. Tell that to the 
to the Catholic Church. Tell that to the United Nations. Tell that to the Arabians. Tell that to the Palestinians. God said that that land over there is my land. So what is the the complete opposite? Would be of the great Americans. This land is my land. This land is your land. No, it's not. But there's one particular piece of land that God calls his own. And it's not America. Strong and without number. Armies. Fierce. With teeth are the teeth of a lion. Well, we know who the lion is in the Bible. The adversary of the devil. He's an imitation of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus Christ comes back as a lion and devours with a sword that comes out of his mouth. But And he, Revelation 13, 2, again, we spoke about the nation. A nation is a group of people. And yet it's referenced to one individual. You never reference a nation as a one person, even under a president or king. Has the cheek teeth of a great lion. And study the, the, the cheek teeth of a lion. Powerful. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing the Antichrist. This has not happened yet. This is yet future. He, again... Revelation 13, 2, with his, with his armies, his strong people, has laid my God's vine waste. I'm looking up the references here. Israel, again, Psalms 80, verse 8, Jeremiah, verse 2, 21. And barked my fig tree, Isaiah 65, 8. So this he, this nation, comes against one particular people, and they're not Gentiles. One particular people that is in God's land, that is God's vine, that is God's tree. And that's the nation of Israel. He has made it clean, bare. Nothing on it. No vegetation, no fruit. Make it almost sound like the palm worm, the locust, and the canker worm, and the caliper, almost like it's the Antichrist. Because they will make complete bare. They won't even leave a vine. But there'll be a remnant left. He has made it clean, bare, and cast it away, threw it away. So there, here with the Antichrist, there is a part of Israel left. They're just thrown away. They're put out. They go into the land that God has prepared for them. Revelation 12. Even though he chases them. The branches thereof are made white. There's no outward protection. The bark is gone. It's susceptible to all diseases and uh, weather. Animals. It's not protected. And that's what the Jew will be as they run from the Antichrist. God will be with them, but they'll have no man protection. No armies are defending them. Lament like a virgin, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. And you can find that in 32, uh, 35 in Deuteronomy. The husband dies before the marriage. Mary was called the wife of Joseph. Joseph was called the husband of Mary. Before they came together. Here's a woman who's looking for, for her husband. Looking for that special time in her life. And it just never happens. The meat offering. Which will return in the tribulation period at least. It may come back now. We don't know when the rapture is going to happen. But the rapture will happen before the tribulation period. But we do know. Besides the rapture, that the meat offering and the drink offerings will return in Jerusalem one day. That temple will be rebuilt. Those Jews will be put back under the law. 
That will be after the church age because we're under grace. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off. Daniel 8, 11, 9, 27, and that's by the Antichrist. That line that we've already read is the Antichrist. He's going to put a stop, a halt. To all activity of the temple. And listen, to the Jew, that's their way of salvation. You've broken off the covenant between them and God. You've broken their law that they can't do. To the Jew, that will be a most serious. From the house of the Lord. See, the house of the Lord's coming back. The priest. They don't know who they are today. They don't know who are the priests. The priests will be acknowledged in the future. They will be there in the house of the Lord to do the, the Levitical service. The priestly uh, chores, duties prescribed by God, they'll be there doing it. The Lord's ministers mourn. They relied on the offerings to live. They're not getting any food. They're not getting their needs. They're not getting the tithes of the people. Now they got to go to work. Leviticus 2, 1 through 3, Exodus 29, 31 to 33. Their occupation has been called to acquit. Now they don't rely on the people, and the people don't rely on God, and God's people are forsaken. The field is wasted. The land mourneth. For the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. And the oil languages. And we saw that in Revelation 6.6. 6, when it talks about that there's going to be a great famine. There's going to be a great price put on food. That it said do not hurt the oil and the wine. Again the oil in the Bible is not motor oil. It's olive oil. Type of the Holy Spirit. That, that wine. That, that, that pure blood. Is the type of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be ashamed. But they're not ashamed today. They will be. O ye husbandmen, those that work the fields. There's coming a time in, in the world, in Jerusalem, there's going to be no crops. How? How often that word comes up? Verses 5, 11, and 13. O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, those are, your, those are your bread. That's the principal source of food that's described throughout the Bible. It's not hamburgers. It's not steak. The last meal that Jesus had with his disciples was bread and wine. No wheat, no barley. You don't have no buns. You don't have no bread. And it's the principal occupation of the people of the Bible. Well, even Boaz was involved in barley harvest. Uh, Ruth went out and gathered barley for her and Naomi. Because the harvest of the field is perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish. Gone. Trashed gotten out no use the vine is dried up that's because it's been barked in israel is there's no children being produced there's no life there's no fruit and the fig tree languishes it luke 13 7 book of lamentations jesus went up to a tree and cursed it and it dried up the pomegranate tree the palm tree also and the apple tree with all the trees in the field are withered to make the tree huggers very upset god don't care if you worship a tree god does not lift up trees in the bible yes he's made them yes there are trees that are for fruit but in the tribulation period you're going to have a lot of tree huggers upset because trees are going to die. They're going to be burnt up. 
There's a very few. The Bible says there's going to be so few trees that a little child will be able to count them. That's not much. Are withered, dead, gone, dried up. No rain, no water, no rivers. Their blood, thanks to Moses. Elijah's running around stopping the rain. Thank you, Elijah. Because joy, 2 Timothy 1.7, is withered away from the sons of men. Joy is gone in the tribulation period. There is no joy. Gird yourselves and lament, ye priests. And this is who the book is written to. You lost your job. You lost your occupation. You lost the chief of the food. You lost the best of the grains. You lost the best what the people of Israel have to offer. You better lament yourself. You better get right. You're the people that are representing God. You're the people that are in the intermarry between God and the people. You're wrong, Malachi. Read what Malachi has to write to the priests and what their attitude is to God. Isaiah 61, 2. Howl, ye ministers of the altar. Now, it's funny that word ministers of the altar there. You know, there are people today that call themselves ministers. You know what kind of work that was? That was hot, sweaty work. The use of utensils to kill the animals, to slay the animals, to clean the animals, to lay the animals out, to keep the fire going, to bring the, the refuse down to the to the to the rough valley, to you know, to bring over and wash to wash themselves, to go in and make the bread. Minister is, is a hard work. They took care of everything what the people couldn't take care of. Come, lie all night in sackcloth. Verses one, uh, verses five, eleven, and thirteen. Get out of your clothes and get into flesh. That's what sackcloth is a type of. It's it's a garment. And it's just not something you want to wear. It brings you down to earth. Ye ministers of my God. better repent and get right for the meat offering and the drink offering is withholding from the house of your god now he says my god and he goes your god james 5 7 through 10 isaiah 61 23 job 42 1 no yeah job 42 and verses 1 120 and 1615 The people can't get right with God. If the people can't get right by God, you can't live. So you see why you got people running around and call themselves priests today? They want to live off the people. That's not the New Testament way. New Testament way, you're to get a job. Sanctify ye a fast. Now we're getting down serious. Not just put that on the rough clothing, but get a fast going. Sanctify. Set apart. It ain't no just fast. You better set yourself apart. Call a solemn assembly. Get the people together. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. This looks like sometime in the tribulation period because we're talking about the Antichrist. We're talking about the, the, the people are drying up. We're talking about death. We're talking about no food. We're talking about no water. We're talking about a desire straight. And Joel writes to, to the priests, get all the people together into the house of the Lord. Now, if that's the case, man, Satan would have a field day. They've all come together. All the sheep have come to the slaughter place. And Jesus says, when you see the abomination that lies desolate as the prophet Daniel spoke, what's he tell them? Run, flee, 
don't you go back to your house. Why wouldn't you go back? Why would he say don't go back to your house? Because you're not at your house. You're at the house of the Lord. If you're in a housetop, don't go down. Just go. This may be at the point where, where Satan reveals himself, opens up that veil, and there he is sitting on the mercy seat. By the way, if that mercy seat and the, and the Ark of the Covenant are there, that's not God's. God's mercy seat in Revelation says it's in heaven. This may be the mercy seat that Indiana Jones found. Maybe a big Hollywood thing. But that mercy seat will not be God's mercy seat. But yet the place would be holy of holies to the Jews. And here's a man standing in there. When Zachar, uh, Zachar, Zach, John the Baptist's father, Zacchaeus, got upset because he saw a man in the holy place. Not the holy of holy. He got upset because here's a, here he is where the table of showbread is. Here he is where the candlestick is. And he turns around and there's a man in the place. It, whoa, whoa, this is, you don't need to be here. This is Yaza, who got leprosy, trying to offer incense for God. They're going to pull that veil back and there, no one else belongs there but the high priest or God. And at that point, you have the Great Tribulation, the last three and a half years. Now, this may be right here where they're all going to be gathered together at the house of the Lord. Well, that can't happen in 2016. They were all gathered together under Ezra. Not all of them, though. Some. St where was Daniel? Do you think Daniel would have been there? All the elders, what, he would have been a great elder. It's a future event. And they're coming to God to get right. Alas for today. What? Verse 13 and 14. For the day the Lord is at hand. You don't want that. You're going to find a prophet say, Woe unto you, the desire of the day of the Lord is the day of darkness, dark, dark, of gloominess. The day of the Lord is at hand. How far is your hand? Not very far away. At hand, what is it? That is the time when the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, is on his way. After they get together. And as, a, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. <coughs> the day of the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The Lord Jesus Christ, the second advent, and God. The nation repents. It's repentance and it brings the second advent. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Uh-oh. No vegetation. No hamburgers. No vegetation, verse 4. No bread, verse 11. No meat, verse 16. So you're not going to have fast food restaurants. You can't get a Whopper when there's no bread, no hamburger, and no lettuce, onion, tomato, whatever you put on it. Not going to get french fries. The potatoes are gone. Who's got all the food? The Antichrist does. Oh, I'll have a garden in my back with no rain. With all these bugs running around. I hope you don't try to do it in Florida. You can't grow a garden in Florida. Never mind with these bugs showing up. Before our eyes, yea, the joy and gladness from the house of our God. Well, what they're talking about, verse 16, is the offering and the animals to God. The joy and gladness of serving God is gone. It's been broken. 
They were serving God with joy. Then the Antichrist comes in and puts a uh, monkey wrench. The seed is rotten under their clods. They're not going to produce nothing. The gardeners, that's where the granary, that's the silos, that's where you keep the grain, are laid desolate. So when you open up the door, there are a bunch of crickets there. Like, we finished it. It's all gone. You got any more? Food is gone. Oh, and you don't get that in these movies about the about the tribulation period. American goes crazy if he has to skip a, a, one of the three major meals in a day. If the doctor tells him, okay, no, you got to fast all night for a blood test in the morning, you go crazy. I can't have no food after midnight. Oh, 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 I gotta hurry up and get there and get the blood test and then go down to the store and get me a biscuit and coffee. We're looking at a seven year period where there's no food. What do you think your Gentile is going to want to do to get some food? But I'll come out, I'll come out of it just fine. I thank God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel, that he died, was buried, and rose again for my sins, that I am not going to go through this. And if you think I'm going through this being saved, you're absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. You know how I know, I don't know if this is a bunny trail or not, but you know how I know I can't go through the tribulation period outside the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? I can't even sit in a dentist chair without any uh, Novocaine. I get a toothache and I get them frequently. I've got to get clover oil. I've got to get something to stop it. If I can't handle a toothache, how on earth am I going to handle the tribulation period? And then not be able to eat? Thank God I rely on God and His Son. And there's food. Because there are nations that are going to help those Jews. Those Jews are in prison. And they get sick. And they have food brought to them. Jesus said. The barns are broken down. Torn down. Trying to find anything. Maybe they hid some food. Maybe there was a cult here that had some extra food hidden somewhere in the basement. For the corn is withered. Dried up. Ain't going to get nothing out of it. You know, there are people in uh, Ethiopia. They eat grass. And they eat it raw without no salad dressing. How do the bees groan in hunger? The herds of cattle are perplexed. Where's the food? Why is this trough empty? You, you come here all the time. It's full. Where is it? Because they have no pasture. It's a wilderness. Israel is going to go back into the wilderness. Wilderness is no food. God had to provide them bread. It's a wilderness. Yea, as, as the devil said. Yea, has God said. What we just read, we found Deuteronomy 28, 29, and 30. Yeah, God said he's going to do this to you when you forsake him. You know what you learned from Joel? This is prophecy. What God said is going to happen, match it with, with Deuteronomy 28, 29, and 30. I bet you Joel is not a popular book in the, in the tabernacles and in the synagogues and at Jewish homes. Who, who would want to read about this stuff? This would not make a movie. The only way you can end this movie and make it good and make a whole bunch of money is have a prince come on his white horse and come and get his bride. And have a big wedding feast. Oh, that's what's going to happen. 
Jesus Christ is going to come on his white horse with his bride, and we're all going to dine and have a honeymoon here on this planet during the thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Jews are going to be happy, they're going to be rejoicing, and they're going to build, the Bible says they're going to plant tomato seeds, and right behind him, his wife is going to be tending that plant, and right behind him, the children are going to be picking the tomatoes that moment. When the curse is removed off the earth. Don't you think there's going to be lamenting and, and joy and greatness as in the time of, of Ezra when they saw that temple and the young ones were rejoicing. Here is the temple. And the old ones were crying because we saw the old temple. We remember. Oh. Those Jews that do make it in the millennium with the Lord Jesus. Oh, we remember when we were starving. We are eating dirt. And the new ones are, hey, look at all this great food we got. Oh, kid, if you only knew what I went through. Listen, you better listen to your grandparents about the, about the uh, uh, depression because it's coming. And your money will not do you no good. And as your grandpa told you the stories of, this, of the depression, how they ate, what they didn't eat and stuff like that, those old Jews will be telling their young Jews in the middle, oh yeah, we remember when we were chased. We remember just like they were supposed to tell about Pharaoh. Yeah, we remember, man, all those frogs came in, that darkness, all the animals died but ours. All the water turned into blood. We remember that. Yea, the flocks of the pastor are made desolate. That yea is a wonderful word in the Bible. Satan said it. Talking to Adam and Eve. The first red brown man and woman. Positive thinking. O Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R. Can you guys do that? That's what it says. To thee will I cry. You think they're going to cry? The Bible says they're going to take their idols and images. They're going to cast them to the holes, to the caves. Because when they see the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to fear. They're going to know at that point they've sinned. For the fire has devoured the, the fire. Revelation 8, 7. All right. You got Moses. He's out there. He's turned the water into blood. You got Elijah out there. He's making it so it's not raining. And now you got fire, so any water you got left ain't going to put the fire out because it's blood. And then you ain't got enough rain to put the fire out because Elijah's over there saying, don't let it rain. How's that? What's going to stop this fire? Nothing. You think the Chicago fire was something. You think the fire that devoured England. Has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. See, I told you, wilderness. And we just read, the pastures are made, there's no pasture. Why? The fire. The caterpillars, uh, well, the palmer worm, the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the drought. You got the fire for the barbecue, but you ain't got no food to do it. Of the wilderness and the flame has burned all the trees of the field. Revelation 8 7. Tree huggers. Match that with verse 12. You know what Joel 1 does? It backs itself up. It's a verily, verily in this chapter. What you read, you'll read again in this chapter. God's saying, You better pay attention. Whoa, hey, pay attention. Howl, pay attention. I've got something important to say. I've got 20 verses here, and it backs up the verses of 20 verses. Why? Because it's going to happen. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, God. Revelation 16. And the point in the Bible, there is a point where the animals do reach out to God. I mean, would it be funny, you know, along, along and there's a tuna, oh, give us some more water. 
For the rivers of waters are dried up. See, I wasn't just saying that to say it. They're, they're gone. And you know where you find these things? You find them in the plagues of Egypt are going to happen again. So when you read Exodus, that's not only history, but it's prophecy. And what did, it, what did God say about Moses? He's going to bring a prophet, like, capital P, like unto Moses. So guess who's going to bring Egypt? I mean, guess who's going to bring Israel out of Egypt? No, not Moses. Jesus Christ. When they come to that, that, that sea and depart it like Joshua did. And the priest set their foot on the river of Jordan and it stops. You wait the Lord Jesus Christ puts that horse foot down in Jordan River. Hold on, wait a minute. There is no Jordan River. Why? Revelation 12. Didn't, didn't Satan drink up all the water source and try to kill Israel with it? The last water source that could be found on the planet, Satan <coughs> trying to kill his enemy. Isn't that great for Satan to do to his people? To take their water and suck it up to kill his enemy. And now there is no water. He has no mercy and no grace. At that point, the Bible says, woe to the heavens and the earth, because he knows his time is short. You want to say, yay, Satan, Satan rules, really? Yeah, he'll rule you in hell. Come on, Master Satan, give me a little drop of water. <laughs> Ain't no water in here. For the rivers of water are dried up. And the fire has devoured the passage of the world. That's three fires, three times it's mentioned. If I were you, I wouldn't stock up food. I'd stock up some water, but you're not going to be able to do that because it's going to be blood. That's what happened in Egypt. They went digging around trying to find water, but it was blood. And so I look at, when I work in a grocery store, I look at these bottles of water. And one day, you're going to go down to the grocery store. Let's get a case of blood. It's even here in the store, it's blood. Don't you see why they're going to get so happy when Moses and Lion get killed? But that's not going to stop it. Just because they die, it's not going to be the end of their things. Joe is a fascinating book. I wonder how many times it's opened up in churches. Uh, it reveals the hand of God. Just reading some of these little notes I got in here. 